Hi, I've built a computer from scratch using only TTL chips and logic gates because hey, why not? I've designed a CPU that is conceptually as simple as possible, easy to build, yet powerful enough to allow for programming little games and educational stuff on it. Sort of the simplest usable personal computer. In the first video of this playlist, I've already ranted about this idea. Anyway, sounds a bit overambitioned? Well, in case you're interested, today's video provides you with all the information you need to build one for yourself. The links are in the description. Fast forwarding one and a half years, we arrive at the final spec of my minimal UART CPU. Performance wise, it's close to an Altair 8800 or an Apple I. It's built in a classic 8-bit von Neumann architecture with a 16-bit address space. The instruction set includes all the good stuff like conditional branching, subroutines, byte word and stack operations. With its 1.84 MHz clock, it spits out 0.25 mega instructions per second. It has 24K of RAM and 8K of ROM and everything it does, it does it through its serial UART interface a terminal display, keyboard input and file I.O. The architecture is deliberately stripped down to the minimum and the whole computer is just a bit bigger than your hand and built out of simple TTL chips. And yeah, there's a cross assembler available for it too. The computer has only five functional blocks. The adder subtractor with its two registers, a program counter, a memory address register with RAM and ROM, the UART interface, and the control logic, all in standard textbook style, with only 16 control signals and memory mapped I.O. In case you want to learn more about some aspects of this architecture, take a look at my minimal 8-bit CPU playlist here on this channel. I've built the first prototype on breadboards, which was fun and allowed me to play around with different ideas on the fly. But breadboards are notorious for contact problems and related instabilities not good for CPUs. So I've taught myself KiCad, a schematics and layout program, and drew up a proper schematic of it, worked out a nice PCB design, sent it to a PCB manufacturer of my liking and finally received these lovely PCBs here. So let's heat up the soldering iron and start assembling. Ooh, that's done now. I've already burned the ROM code and the CPU's microcode into these 8K EE prompts with the programmer I built in my previous video. Let's plug them in and we should be ready to rock. I am using this little USB to serial converter here, which also provides power and ground. Now I bring up TerraTerm for serial communication. OK, I think we are ready for the moment of truth. Let's press the reset button and keep fingers crossed. And yes, we see the start screen of the little machine. OK, we have some helpful information about the memory layout here. So RAM starts at hex address 2000 and everything above 8000 is memory mapped to the UART interface. And with the commands below, we can display the RAM content and write stuff into memory. Let's try that. Hmm, after power up, we have just random garbage in the RAM. Let's fill a memory area with zeros to clean up this mess. 
Let's have a look again. We can also input a little program directly now. The monitor accepts instruction mnemonics. Let's for example load hex41 into the accumulator by typing ldi41. STA0080 sends it over to the UART, which is then outputting the letter A to our terminal. At 2010, let's jump back to 2000 with GPA0020. Note that we are a little endian here, so the LSB comes first. Let's go back and type R for run. Oh, we also have a little disassembler to take a look at our program. Nice. But what else have we got? Ah, we can have some fun playing Pong. Or Tetris. And there's also a 64-bit integer math library with a little calculator front end. Let's try some additions or multiplications. <laughs> we can use crazy large numbers here. And now for division. Okay, maybe you ask yourself how to ever write longer programs by banging mnemonics into the keyboard. Well, you don't have to, of course. There's this little cross-assembler ready to assist you. Let's try it out. I have opened up one of the example programs here called hello.txt. As you can see, it's assembler in plain text with labels and all the goodies. And if I open up a console, I can assemble it essentially to keyboard input, which I then cut and paste into the terminal. This is so convenient. Okay, I hope I could show that this little system is way more powerful than its seemingly humble design may indicate, and it is more than capable of running interesting software. Having lots of fun with this minimal UART CPU myself, I would love to see some software development happening and a little community growing around it. I believe that this may also be of educational value for those of you interested in the base concepts of CPU design. For what it can do, I believe it can't really be built any simpler and therefore can count as a quite unique model system. I am releasing this design into the public now. Let's take a look at my GitHub repository and browse through the available information. I just click on code and download zip. Let's unzip and open up the KiCad project. From here we can open up the layout editor and see what the PCB layout is gonna look like. Ah, there's also this fancy 3D preview function. Nice. Some PCB manufacturers will let you send them this KiCad project directly, but almost all of them will accept the so-called Gerber files. I also provide them here along with a bill of materials. Okay, what else have we got here? Oh, there is the binary images of the 8K system ROM and the two control ROMs. You also find the overview of the instruction set and a folder that contains some example assembler programs, as well as the cross assembler called asm.exe we've used earlier in this video. So if you are on the lookout for a hands-on computer build project, there really is no excuse anymore. And this is it for today. I'd love to see your thoughts about this educational CPU design in the comments down below. Take care. Bye.